All right, brother man, we are live. This is Mike Wall back with another episode of the Agent Revolution Podcast, the place where we deconstruct the biggest challenges facing today's real estate agents so that they can build a sustainable, profitable, and most of all, fulfilling real estate business. Today, I've got one of my favorite pe people, my friend, my partner at EXP Realty, Mr. Jeremy Johnson. Brother, what's up? Hey, Mike, thanks for having me again, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, dude, it's always fun to have you on, man. And, and uh, you and I obviously are partners here in the uh, Southwest Ohio region. And I'm um, super excited to get you on. Um, the reason why I wanted to have you on today, well, first of all, I mean, the elephant in the room, right, is we're all on lockdown, right? We, we as real right. estate agents, were deemed essential. And, um, and we're still able to go out and work and carry on business um, for the most part. Uh, and, and while, you know, there are still... There are still transactions taking place in our local marketplaces. They're being done a, a little bit differently. Uh, and, and I'll give you a quick example. I mean, my my I have an investment business in, in uh, a guy named Jay Toms and myself. We went to a closing uh, at a at a company or a title company up north in uh, Fairborn, and we literally we sat in this giant room, right? And we were all like the closer was like in the corner of a room, and then we sat at this table. And it was like a fold out chair table. The, the, the room had no carpet. It was just this giant room. And everybody was scooted back from the table and had masks on and gloves. And, um, and, and that, that is, I don't, I don't want to say the new normal because it won't continue to be this way. But for now, it is the, it is the you know, it is a normal circumstance where, you know, you wouldn't otherwise look at that and go, this is crazy. It's just, it is what it is right now. But I wanted to have you on specifically, Jeremy, because, um, you know, we've been talking over the last couple of weeks and your business is, is flourishing right now. And, um, you know, you haven't really let off the gas. And I know a lot of people, while, um, things like this are going on, they want to know, they want some, they want some practical ideas on how they can continue to be successful or have success in this type of marketplace. And, um, you know, the data from the previous two weeks, there was 385 transactions last week, 340, or excuse me, 345 transactions last week, 385 the week before that. And I know some of those were yours, but I want you to talk specifically about how you are continuing to do business in this market. What is, what, what is your secret? I guess, Mike, really, there isn't a, a big secret. Um, Things things have definitely changed in our world. Um, things have changed in our marketplace, no doubt about it. Um, the things that I'm that I'm doing now, having to uh, make adaptations for for my clients and um, the agents that I work with, um, those have changed. Uh, but as far as the way I approach my daily schedule, the way I approach my business, um, that hasn't changed one bit. In fact, you, know, you just had to. Um, you got to do a little more, quite honestly. Um, so, you know, keeping, like you said, keeping a daily schedule and another element into this where we're at in the world right now is, um, you know, I'm in, I'm in the office as much as I can, but more than half the week, I have my children with me too. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of parents out there, they're struggling with finding time to work from home as well as homeschool their children. Um, I homeschool my six-year-old and I have a two-year-old running around us, um, you know, for those of you who know what that's like. Um, so that's an entirely different new challenge because there, there are no babysitters. There are no drop-offs. It's me and me. Um, so now my kids are, um, at this point, fairly well-trained. They know that daddy has to work from home. They know, um, they know kind of the routine when we wake up, there's, you know, there's stuff that I have to get done in the morning after I make them breakfast, then we go into school. And then I have to continue with um, the things that I have to do with my prospecting um, later in the evening <laughs> and things of that nature. So I'm trying, I'm doing everything that I can just to, uh, to get them because I have to blend that into with my work schedule where my work schedule is now. Yeah, uh, more than half the week. Um, so, but just staying, staying um, in touch. The biggest um, thing I have seen is staying in touch with people, uh, my friends and family and past clients, um, people who've already done business with me and who may do business with me in the future. Um, just staying in contact with people and coming from a place that's um, very genuine. And you know, you know, there's agents that might be watching this, like. 
if you're not genuine, people will smell you out, especially if they know you. Um, if they will, um, they will feel that you're coming from a place of scarcity, not abundance. And um, I think that something for myself that I have always been, one of my strengths is coming from a genuine place. And it is, um, I truly enjoy helping people and, and serving uh, my clients and any other people that I can really. Yeah. So talk me, um, or actually walk me through like the ideal day for you. And, and we know like as a single parent, it's tough to have like an ideal day, but you know what you want that to look like. Um, unfortunately, right. it doesn't always unfold that way, but you know that no. if it does more often than not, then you can have success doing that. So what would an ideal day look like for you as a single dad with the children? Right. So uh, an ideal day for me, <laughs> and, and sometimes it really does go smoothly. Like I had, um, you know, a couple good ones, a couple bad ones this week. I would like to get up uh, before before my kids get up and um, run through my morning emails and any follow ups, any business that I ha may have to attend to, whether it's an inspection report, um, kind of communicating with um, our admin with those kind of things running through emails, um, some prospecting, um, some phone calls before they wake up. Sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes they wake up the before me. Yeah. Um, so that would be ideal to, cause in a normal world, I like to get a morning session and an evening session with my prospecting, whether that be from one of our platforms provided from the team or um, simply just checking in with um, people in general. Right. And that's been very, you know, just I like to go through my through my phone book and maybe send send 10 messages a day or 10 phone calls to people right. that are just in my phone book, whether they've talked to them in years or not. And the people appreciate that right now, guys. I mean, I'll speak for myself. Um, it's tough sometimes not having adult interaction and having that connection with humans um because this is me and my little guys and uh, when when it's time for me to not be at home with them i can't wait to get to the office and see you guys um i'm, I'm showing houses to a couple of my friends right now um pretty often and last week i i said to them i said geez it is good to see you um it is just it, it, just, it really is so I know how I felt like I miss talking to my friends. Um, and so everybody appreciates that right now, right? Even yeah. more than usual. Some people in the normal world we were used to, they don't like getting phone calls um, then because they're like, they're thinking, well, could we text this, you know? But right now people enjoy getting the phone call, say, how are you doing? Um, family members, I talked to my aunt on the phone a while ago it was last week it was so nice to speak with her yeah. and um you know just simply just to have that human connection and people really appreciate that even yeah. if it isn't coming from a place of business you know just just to check in and people so yeah. um so i go through that um ideal day breakfast for myself and the kids and um you know then i have my sons he's in kindergarten so I'm a teacher now too. And um, I'll, I will add this, that in my past life, I was an educator. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who don't know. And um, I worked with disabled young adults. So um, there's certainly a lot of challenges that presented in that life for me. But teaching one kindergartner um, who is almost spot on just like me, is one of the hardest individuals I've ever had to teach in my life. <laughs> so I know a lot of parents are dealing with that right now. Um, and I've talked to a number of them that say it's, it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, so of course you're, I'm teaching one, one child, one typical child, um, kindergarten level school work. Yeah. And it's like, wow. Yeah. So this is tough. That's, that's, whether or not in like sixth, seventh, or eighth grade, because that's kind of where I that's where I couldn't help my kids. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh, I could I couldn't imagine that type of math right now. Like, yeah. Oh, isn't it crazy? I mean, my, my, well, my, what I'm, 
youngest was talking about parabolas, and I was like, I remember that word, but I don't remember what that is. No, no way. I, and I'm reading these lesson plans in this curriculum, and I'm just like, I feel like I'm reading a syllabus from college. Yeah, yeah. He's in kindergarten. Now, you break it down and, you know, take a little bit at a time. You're like, okay, this makes sense. But sure. when you first see that and see that email and the videos and the instructions, I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is insane. Yeah. So uh, I, that's definitely – that's a big challenge in our day. Yeah. My son, he's a very he's a very good boy. Most days he does well. On the days that he doesn't um, – he reacts and kind of responds in the same way I did in school. And it's like, mm, there's, there's my payback. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a but um, yes, exactly. Uh, but we get through it. So that's a big, that's a big part of the day and trying to um, keep the two year old at, at bay, why that happens. Yeah. That's a challenge in itself. And, um, you know, you, so normally I like, we'll go do something fun after that. We'll have lunch. Maybe if the, if the little one needs to take a nap, yeah. something like that. But I, I'd like to be on schedule with my evening prospecting session. Yeah. Um, you know, so normally sometimes I have my calendar for four or five o'clock. Um, so when, when that time comes, um, I would like to ideally be doing that during whether it be an hour or an hour and a half to t between an hour and two hours. Right. So I like to, I like to touch, um, do touches in the morning and the evening Yeah. with all that jumble down in the middle. Yeah. So and, you're, um, you're doing yeah, a lot of your warm follow-up, a, lo a lot of your warm follow-up you're doing in the morning and then you're trying to generate new business in the evening. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. And so, and, no and normally during those, um, you know, you know, three or four days where it, you know, they are with me. I'm trying to schedule my, cause I, I'm, I have a lot of appointments and my appointments have not backed off. Yeah. And so trying to, to schedule these appointments to where, because I, there are no babysitters. I don't, I don't ask anyone, I, even if it is family, because um, the family that I do ask, they are, they're up there in age. And um, I just want to be as cautious as possible to make sure I am not putting you know, my parents or their other grandparents in danger. Yeah. Um, so it, it's just me and me. So, but at the same time, a big challenge is, at, and we'll touch on this further on, this market is insane. And I have a, an obligation to my clients to get these, to get them in these houses as quick as possible. Yeah. Um, I, I put a market, you know, a new listing on the market, you know, a week and a half ago, the first showing, we got a solid offer that was under contract. Um, you know, I have clients right now. We have not gotten in 10, 10 houses because they went pending before we got in. So I have an obligation to these people to get them in as soon as possible. Yeah. Um, so that is a huge challenge in itself. So, um, but thus far, I, I, my honestly, I've lost track of how many days we've been in solitude. I stopped yeah. counting. Has it been five weeks, four weeks? I don't know. Yeah. Um, it's worked out for me. And, you know, part of part of it is strategizing how I manage my day and timing everything. Um, part of it, honestly, is just by the grace of God, honestly, because, you know, some of this stuff you can't you can't put into place and it's been into place for me um, thus far. So I've been able to manage it. Yeah. You know, well. you brought up a great point, man. What the, the, what, what just came to my mind is that a lot of what's showing up for you right now is a result of what you did 90 days ago. Right. Yes, and, absolutely. And, and I remember, I mean, you were consistently hitting your dial totals. You were in here every day. Um, you were just on it, man. And, 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 and so you're reaping the reward of that right now. Right. right? Absolutely. And, and then the, but the dangerous part of that, right. Is that, and you've been on this side of it as well, is that if you let your foot off the gas right now, which, Hey, listen, there's a really good excuse to let off the gas right now. Right. Sure. And I always yeah. say people feel comfortable showing houses right now and, and people don't feel yeah. how, how comfortable having you in their homes, but you're not buying into that. I mean, you, there are still yeah. people as we know, right. The data shows People are still buying and selling houses, right? And so you're you've taken the mindset that I'm just going to go out and take market share. I'm going to go out and get in front of those people 
who are still comfortable going out in this market, right? Right. Uh, of course, that, and that's absolutely true. And I don't ever want to push myself on any other agent or any customers. It's everyone's comfort level for right. myself. My, my comfort level is I will go into houses. I will show houses. Now, there's precautions that we have. You know, there's there's things that, you know, uh, you know, our company, um, other companies and other brokers in the area and, um, you know, the Cincinnati and Dayton MLS, we have we have collaborated to be as cautious as possible to keep ourselves um, the homeowners and the people looking at the properties as safe as possible, but everyone has their own comfort, comfort level. For me, I'm going to houses. I, that's just how it is. No, I'm not going to take, you know, I'm not going to do it while I haven't done it with my children because there's no sitters. Uh, you know, I've just been able to schedule everything when they are not with me. Right. Um, and my clients who are looking right now, they understand um, the condition of the market. They know they need to be out there. They all, the ones that I'm actively, they already, they already trust me. Um, they're, they're following all the precautions of both the seller and the ones that I've, you know, explained to them. Um, so, and from the seller side, when I put up that listing, I explained everything and, and you know, it's, everyone's different. Um, my clients were good with it. They wanted people, luckily, we had one and it was done. And I had this, you know, I had to cancel several other showings. Um, it's just everybody's preference. Now, um, I knew that I was just going to do it. The, the things, you know, in the last 60 days that I have experienced is a byproduct of what I was doing at the end of last year. Um, you know, backstory, the end of last year, I was struggling in my business um, because I let, I, I took my foot off the gas when I was having success this time, you know, the first two or three quarters of the year last year. Yeah. So I had a lot of prospecting time. I had a lot of time to wake up and, um, and I don't want that to happen again. So the people that I'm doing business with in the last 60 days, I was already working with before we, um, you know, got these restrictions from COVID-19. Um, but now I understand that no matter what, the conditions are out there. I have to keep going. Now, my colder, my colder calls, they are a lot more challenging. No doubt about it. Absolutely. They are trying to get a, um, a seller in the neighborhood to put their house on the market because I have clients yeah. looking in the area. That's a lot tougher game. It absolutely. It is no doubt about it, but it's not impossible. Um, like, and, and just, just how much you read anybody looking at this could open their Facebook right now. talking about fear, 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 market crash, market crash. Um, every agent's going to feel this. I could leave here today and get T-boned by a bus. Yeah. That could happen. That could happen. And, or, and the market could crash, but I still have to go do what I have to do when I leave this office today. Um, anyways, so the market, the market could shift, the market could change, but I still have to do what I have to do because I have, I have an obligation to myself uh, and to my children to do what I have to do. Right. So that's what I'm going to do. I, I, you know, yeah. that, that's just me. Yeah. Um, and you've been you showing know. your consistency, I think is what's made you successful. It's, it's, it's about, it's not just about showing up, putting in time. It's about putting, it's about being effective in your lead generation. It's about calling the right lead categories. And to your point, I know we had a discussion about this too, is that, you know, it's not necessarily about setting appointments right now either. While no. it is good to set appointments, essentially what you're doing in a time where uh, we are considered on lockdown in the state of Ohio is it's free game on the phones right now is, and, and I don't mean, you don't need to go into the mindset with, I got to set appointments right now. You need to go into the mindset with, I need to build a pipeline right now so that when this is over and now come May 1st, right, this will, will, will start in, in, uh, in, in increments to try and get back to, to normal is that people are slowly going to start coming back into the marketplace and the people that do the work up front right now that lead gen right now, are the people whose businesses are going to just boom when this is all over. Would you agree? Right. Absolutely. 
um, there, you know, there was an agent in our group um, just recently was, you know, asking for, I guess, advice with our lead gen systems and just kind of frustrated, which is natural. It, it can be, it, like I said, it's a tough game right now, no doubt about it. But whether we're in this world right now or six months ago, the, the, it's the same. You want the, that lead generation. You can't. You can't bank on an appointment every time you hit the phone. You can't bank on an appointment every time you roll through your through your you know phone book. You can't. It's the victories and the nurtures and the consistency. So you know, I know something that you and I say around here is um, when you're doing the things that you're supposed to do, those home runs show up. Yeah, and they have. And I can't really explain it. Now, those home runs generally show up right now in the form of your sphere of influence, um, friends, family, um, referrals, people who already know, like, and trust you. Um, and that, I mean, that goes with um, touching at, you know, the things I talked about earlier, the phone, phone calls, text messages, checking in with people. But um, you do the, you put in the, work those other things are going to come isn't it funny of course, you know, you're not doing like when you're that for some reason when you're not doing the right things when you're not lead generating when you're you know when you're when you're not putting forth the effort that business just yeah. dries up but when you are consistently putting in the effort it's it's not that you, maybe you're going to make a call and set an appointment through the mojo dialer but you know you're, sure. you're making your calls and then Someone DMs you, your cousin DMs you on Facebook and says, "Hey, I think we're we're thinking yeah. about going out and finding a house right now." It's it's not it's not an accident, folks. It that it, yeah. it is it is it is um it's the law of reciprocity. What you give is what you get. You know what I mean? Absolutely, it's a real thing, guys. Um, so even if you feel like you're not going to sit down on the phone and hit a home run, you keep doing it. The home run's going to come. Yeah. And um, and if it doesn't because it doesn't always, you set a pipeline for your future, you know, the next month or the next quarter, or it, it's a long game next year. There's some, there is someone I talked to within the last 35 days that's going to do business with me in 12 months. And it's, it's going to, it's going to be like, Oh great. I'm glad I did that. I'm glad I made the phone call. I'm glad right. that I um, sent that email or sent that text message. Um, and I'll take that all day. If there's somebody who's going to do business with me in 13 months, heck yeah, I'll do it. I'll, I'll put in the work right now to get them there. What's your message right now for people who are, who are not lead generating, who are not doing anything, who are, are just inactive? Um, uh, my message for them is, listen, I've been on both sides of the gate. I have, you know, my I have soared to, you know, heights were with the best of them. Um, and because I didn't keep lead, lead generating when I was successful, I fell to the complete bottom, the absolute bottom. Yeah. And that's not a place I like to be. That's not a place I want to be again. So I strongly encourage all of you to not get to that point because there is still so much opportunity out there right now. Um, I told my sellers, the serious buyers are there now. There's not going to be as many people playing around. Yeah. And it's, it's, and it showed up in my business. Um, you know, and the, and the buyers, the buyers, they're not playing around. They're not just looking around. They're ready to talk to my lender and they're ready to get into houses right now. So there's so much opportunity there right now. And if it's not a home run, talk to people right now that's going to do business with you whenever the world is um, a little different. I'm not going to even say normal again, because we might have a new normal, but it might be better. It yeah. might be better. Again. It might, I, getting into that again, um, living in the world, going back to normal. Do we, it, yeah. it may not be normal again, but we may, we may learn a lot from, you know, there's beauty, beauty that'll come from the ashes here. So, uh, and that's the same approach in business. And um, we've, you know, the real estate market and any other market has experienced dips before or even complete crashes. 
and it's and the and it comes you know beauty comes from the ashes yep and so it sounds to me like you're you've not really changed the way you approach your business at all it's it's as if nothing really ever changed the only the only approach that you've changed um is the conversations that you're having with folks and the precautions you're taking when you're in front of buyers and sellers correct absolutely you know the i haven't there hasn't been like a change in you know my strategy lead gen strategy it's i understand that it's more difficult it is easier to start conversations right now how are you doing how is your family family adapting here's how mine's adapting you know the hardest part for me i told you is incorporating school with my children and not having any babysitters yeah. that's the cha- most challenging part for me how about you and it's it's easier to start conversations and um, like I said, I, I, I can't stress it enough um, to be genuine. Um, I think everybody, I think everybody has a, has a gift or gifts that they can give to this world. I don't know if my, my biggest gift in the world is selling real estate. Um, my, in every other past life I've had, my other careers and, um, corporate wellness or in education has been giving and serving. And that's why I have had the success that I have had in real estate yeah. because that's, that's where I'm coming from, from a place of service and from a place of caring. So I love giving that to my clients, um, to the agents that I work with and um, people that I could help in the future. Um, because that's what I loved about my past careers. And that was hard for me to let go of those because I just love serving people. Um, so, you know, I, you know, not to throw out client reviews or whatever, but this, I had a client recently, this chain, this, we went through a very challenging transaction. She said, Jeremy, this really made an impact on my life. This changed my life. Mm -hmm. And, you were there. You um, you protected me, you know, from things coming left and right, and uh, really, you know, got her through it because it was a very it's a very stressful process. Every transaction is in some way, shape, or form. So that just I love hearing that because that just reminded me that um, that's no matter what my career changed into I'm still giving what I think is my gift. So I encourage you guys to whatever it is you niche at or yeah. whatever it is um, that your strong suit is really give that to your people, yeah. really give that um, to your clients, your customers, your, the other agents you work with um, because you want every, the people that you work with to respect you. Um, that's, I always want to the agent, the last agent that I work with to say, wow, it was great working with him. Yeah. Um, you know, cause essentially we're, we're in this together. So you want everybody to have good feelings about the business that they did. with you. It's a great point, man. And right now, I mean, you know, everybody needs that, that support. Everybody needs to hear, you know, like you said, I mean, if you, if you turn on the news, if you're, if you're, if you're, you know, scrolling through Facebook, it's it's most of the news right now. It's just negative, man. It's just nasty, and it's yeah. you want to feed your brain with that all day. Um, gosh, Patricia Turner was on last week, and I guess Joel Osteen, um, who's a televangelist, he he gave this analogy, and I just thought it was so impactful, man. He talked about you know a ship going out to sea, right? And the ship goes out to sea. And all around it are the events of the world, right? The negative events. And that ship, you know, is a is a fortress, right? And what happens is, you know, if, a, if there's a hole poked in the side of that ship, then what happens is the water starts to leak in, right? And that's essentially, Joel Osteen was saying, that's essentially what, what happens to us is when we start watching all this negative news is that we're, we're essentially poking holes in our ship and we're letting that information get in and influence how we think. And then when we start to think those negative thoughts, um, 
that's what we give. That's the that's the energy. That's the vibe we give out to our clients, and and we actually repel people instead of attract them into our world. Right. No, so, that's 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 great. That's another thing, guys. Like, it's so easy to get bogged down and um, even like stressed with what's happening in the world. And to be completely honest, I'm not immune to it. I can I can talk think myself into it, especially when it was new. And um, I'm like, because I hate feeling restricted in my life. Yeah, I like to feel free. Um, I don't like being told what I can and can't, like most people do. They want to do what they want to do. And we have grown so accustomed to the things that uh, we're accustomed to, the um, amenities and the luxuries that we have. And really, at least for myself, I can see like, we got a lot of luxury or we did have a lot of luxury out there yeah. and um, that we didn't even really realize or appreciate. Sure. Um, so it, it's, it's easy to get that feeling, but you, you, if you, if you let that overcome you daily, no matter what it is that you do, whether it be business, whether it be your job um, or your children you you can really just let it weigh on you and it's going to spill over into your family and the people that you're trying to get to do business with you and it's it's not going to it's not going to serve anybody else right um so keep keeping a positive mindset i know we can't go to gyms anymore you still got to try to exercise my my exercise regimen is frustrating but i try to do something um, you know, just to keep my mental state up there. Now you, you can't, it's harder to push yourself to physically, but it's, it's about the mind right now. Right. Um, meditation, reading, um, surrounding yourself with the right people, positive people. Um, that's more important than ever. Um, so if you're, if you're bogged down with your stress, it's going to spill over into your business. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's more challenging than ever to keep your mind in the right place. Yeah. All all but excellent, it's, but it's possible. Excellent points. And, and by the way, um, it all starts with the proper mindset. Without the proper mindset, Jeremy wouldn't be able to go out on a daily basis and and approach his business the way he has because. He is, we, you mentioned before, coming from a place of abundance, and that's essentially what you're doing when you're coming from a place of abundance. Right. It's, um, it's, a, it, it's a positive channel, right? And you're able to go forward. Right. And you know that once you put in, you will get back. And so there, right. the, the secret sauce is there is no secret sauce, right? He's, yeah. What he's doing is he's approached his business the exact same way. The conversations have changed. The, the precautions have changed. He's um, continuing... Um, He's continuing to to um, nurture his, the proper mindset, right? And um, and you're and then you're showing up as a father every day. It's nothing's changed, folks. Listen, no. it, it is. It, in, in the 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 funny thing is, is that I've had this conversation. This is the fourth, the third or fourth conversation I had in this crushing the quarantine series, and the consistency on what you all are saying is almost exactly the same. And, and so I hope people are able to see that that it is not. There's no hard. There's no uh, rocket science formula based data that we're presenting here. It's simply just it's it's being consistent in what you do and protecting your mind. Right. No, there's um, and, and not to get not to get too deep here, but I, I think everybody watching this can kind of pull from a time in their life or times or years in their life where their back has been against the wall and. Um, that's been a big theme of my life. My back's against the wall and there's only one direction to go because you can't go back. You're, you're, you're stuck between a rock and a hard place and you're either going to push out of it and you're going to thrive or you're going to freeze. You're yeah. going to freeze. And you, you have to adapt. You have to adapt to the current situation. And I tell you what, I, I have... <laughs> I could talk on here for another hour about times in my life when my back's been against the wall and I have pushed through and succeeded. 
And this is no different for me. Um, just this, well, I talked about my fourth quarter collapse last year, that my back was against the wall and I did the work that I had to do to get out of it. Um, that's just one example. Yeah. Um, I was, I was, I'm conditioned for this, man. I, I'm, I'm going to make it because I've made it before. And you don't and, have a choice, um, right? You don't have a choice. It's like you got to. They always say the best thing about hitting rock bottom is you can push. You, you can use your feet to kick off the, off the uh, off the rocks below, right? It's like you then, then then you can start going back up. But so what I want to know from you, man, um, is I want to know where you to put a bow on this thing. Where do you think we're going? Like where do you what 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 do you think this does to the market? Um, and how will real estate look moving forward? I think that, um, and like I said, it's it's a new normal. It's going to be a new normal because it's not going to be exactly how it always was. As far as the precautions, I think there's going to be precautions everywhere for a long time. And maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that is a good thing. Maybe maybe we realized we were using too much. We had too much. We were doing too much. Um, so as far, you know, as far as business, those precautions are going to be there for a long time. Um, I, I believe if there is still a market dip to come, it's not going to be long guys. Hopefully we are at the tail end of this thing and, um, I got to fight to get in houses. You know, when we get off here, I'm in the truck and I'm headed to two places and quick because I know it's going to be a multiple offer for both of them. Wow. Um, I mean, that's, that's what it is right now. So, uh, and that's what I'm telling my sellers. Yep. Still Mike. do it. Put your guys. Listen, if anyone out there is considering maybe selling their home, maximize it, get it, get your money now. Um, call your favorite agent, do it now because, and buyers, um, interest rates, they're, they're still low guys. Um, you know, our lenders are ready, you know, they're getting pre-approvals for me as quick as possible. Um, if we do experience a little bit of a dip or a shift, I don't think it's going to be, um, a long one, right. You know, for, for a number of reasons. And, um, you know, as far as, as far as, as far as the agents out there, well, there's a lot of us out there and, um, to be quite blunt, the cream will rise. Um, who's, who's supposed to be here will stay here and who is not, they will drift off. They will either not do any more transactions or they will move on to other things um, because it's just not working. And it's so it's going to happen. Um, and, you know, good for the ones that are working and um, have intentions of building their business, you know, through the, pro, you know, through the world that we're living in now. Love it. Love it. Love it, man. Jeremy, how can people get in touch with you if they have questions about, you know, how you're how you're continuing to have success through this marketplace or if they just want to connect with you? Um, so, you know, this, you know, the video is going to run through your Facebook. You can connect with my J Jeremy Johnson or um, Jeremy Johnson EXP Realty. All my contact information is in there. Uh, phone number, email. Um, if you have any questions for me, guys, please just reach out to me. Um, I had. Um, a couple of newer agents and a future agent called me uh, last week. First, uh, you know, just wanted to talk. Um, like I said, coming from a place of genuine caring, if you contact me and want to know what's working for you, Jeremy, what's not working for you, I will genuinely tell you. Um, I'm not going to hold anything back. So just reach wow. out to me. Love it, love it, love it, man. As usual, I love sharing these stories week after week because I know the show literally changes agents' financial lives, my own included. Hey, guys, do me a big favor. If you know someone that might enjoy the podcast, please share it with them. If you like the podcast, please go to wherever you listen to podcasts and smash that subscribe button. If you want to jump on a call for free with me for 30 minutes for a free business strategy session, go to meetmikewall.com. And for Mike Wall, Jeremy Johnson, that's all for this one, folks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for having me. I got to get out of here and get on the road, go to those showings. Go to the house, baby. All right. Bye. Bye.